The market for big, posh saloon cars has all but disappeared, unless you're BMW, Audi or Mercedes, that is. It's something the French have wrestled with for a couple of decades now. Renault, Peugeot and even Citroën have failed to win the hearts of international executives. But here's where DS comes in. DS reckons it can mix it with the premium players with its new, swoopy DS9. But here's the thing though, it's not as simple as sticking some fancy badges on the nose and filling the interior with big screens and nice leather. Company car drivers are a fussy bunch and that is why they gravitate to cars like the Mercedes E-Class and the BMW 5 Series. So does this new DS9 have enough to challenge those established market leaders? We'll find out in this video review, but before we take this thing for a drive, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the Driving Electric YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so you're notified when new videos go live. The DS9 is available from launch with a choice of petrol and plug-in hybrid powertrains. This, being driving electric, will discount those cars with no uh, electric element for the sake of our video review. No matter, as it's these plug-in hybrid versions that will be of particular appeal to company car drivers, thanks to their low CO2 emissions and 30-odd mile electric range. Now, we won't spend too long looking around the outside of the DS9 because we did that in our walk around video in the studio a few months ago, but regardless, looks are subjective, so we'll leave you to decide whether this car ticks all the right boxes in that regard. Anyway, ignoring looks, this car comes with all the kit you'd expect of a car of this type. You've got LED headlights, you've got big wheels, chrome trim, tinted windows, and while the panoramic roof on this car is optional, all the rest of the kit is there. It's in here where the DS9 feels like it makes the biggest leaps towards the likes of Audi and Mercedes, certainly when it comes to interior quality. Everything just feels really nicely finished. There's some lovely metals down here and some gorgeous leather on the dash. Speaking of leather, you can option these seats with a kind of watch strap design. Now, it's a £3,000 option, but we sat in a car with them fitted earlier and we've got to be honest, they're so sumptuous and so, so comfortable. So worth thinking about that if you're thinking about a DS9. Elsewhere, the screen, the dials, and the clock on top of the dash look and feel great. Now, the usual Peugeot, Citroen, and DS caveats do apply when it comes to this infotainment system in that it's not all that responsive and it can be a little bit laggy, but at least you do get this ledge to rest your finger on when you're operating things and a row of shortcut buttons underneath. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto take care of mobile phone connectivity. The DS9 e tense gets a 1.6 litre petrol engine paired with an electric motor and an 11.9 kilowatt hour battery. Quoted range is between 33 and 34 miles depending on spec, although in our experience on a full charge you're probably looking at 20 at a push. Still, if you plug in regularly, you could see dramatically reduced running costs versus a conventional petrol or diesel car. That official range, combined with low CO2 emissions, puts it in one of the lowest company car tax bands. Charging takes 1 hour 45 minutes from a 7 kilowatt home wall box. This being a plug-in hybrid, there's no option for CCS fast charging. The cable for home charging is included as standard. And now for what this new DS9 is like to drive. I'll be honest, when I got in, I wasn't entirely sure what to expect. You see, this car's established rivals, I'm thinking BMW 5 Series, Mercedes E-Class, they all managed to mix some kind of dynamic appeal with a decent level of comfort, and that is something that for all their plus points, the French manufacturers haven't always managed to do. But here in this DS9, they made a pretty good stab at it. It's not the last word in precision, that price still goes to BMW, but it's certainly not sloppy. The steering is light, but accurate enough. The body control, that's fine. It's not the kind of car you're gonna relish driving quickly, but to all intents and purposes, and for what this car is gonna be used for, it's absolutely up to the job. Ride comfort is fantastic as well. It just floats over the bumps. Only really big, sharp potholes cause any kind of upset. It starts silently, providing you've got enough charge left in the batteries. And if you leave it in its electric mode, it's really refined and pretty luxurious. Okay, it's not quite as composed if the engine has to kick in, but that's less noticeable when you're at speed. Performance is adequate rather than particularly noteworthy, although it does feel faster than its 0-62 mile an hour time of 8.3 seconds suggests, with that electric motor filling in any of the gaps that you might notice in a normal petrol car. Ring it out though, it does feel a little bit strained. As always, you can get a full rundown of the specs on our website review, the link for which can be found in the description below this video. But suffice to say, the starting price of just over £46,000 for the entry-level performance line variant will raise a few eyebrows. It's punchy perhaps, but less than you'll pay for a like-for-like -like BMW or Mercedes.
and yet the DS comes with all the kit you'd expect on a BMW or Mercedes, like the big 12-inch central screen, heated seats, and 19-inch wheels. Rivoli costs a little over £3,000 more, adding frivolities, sorry, luxuries, like leather instead of Alcantara, semi-autonomous driving, and poly-ambient interior lighting. If you want our advice, stick with the cheaper car. Saloons will never be as practical as hatchbacks or estates, and yet the DS9 makes a pretty strong case for those sitting in the back. In many respects, DS is pitching this as a car for those who like to be driven. The DS7 has already been used for French presidential duties, and this, thanks to its generous rear legroom, looks like a suitable candidate for future European leaders. That said, headroom could be better. The 510 litre boot is a good shape and size. Okay, again, it's not as practical as a hatchback, but I guess if you're in the market for a car like this, only a saloon will do. The overall shape and size is a little bit smaller than you'll find in a petrol or diesel Mercedes E-Class, but if you go for the hybrid version of that car, there's a huge step in the floor and it's just totally impractical. At least DS here has managed to keep things flat and level. And there's even space under here for one of the charge cables. This is the most convincing DS product to date. The DS9 is proof that the luxury French car maker is edging ever closer to those truly established premium brands. And if it can maintain this momentum, it won't be long before company car drivers up and down the land are questioning whether they want the monotony of another dull, boring three box saloon car. Head to drivingelectric.com for all the latest electric and hybrid car advice, news and reviews. And check us out on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Finally, while you're here, make sure you hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel and turn on notifications to ensure you never miss a video.